Hey guys, welcome back to the Korean Cut YouTube channel. And if you're new here, I sure do appreciate you stopping by and watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, leave a go, comment down below, and uh, check out our Instagram at Korean Cut and our Patreon at Korean Cut. Also, I uh, sure do appreciate all your guys' help on the Patreon. You know, it means the world to me. All the proceeds are going to go directly back into the channel to buy new knives and new equipment to hopefully make the quality and the content better for you guys. So today, we got the tools out again. We're going to be going over the Sativian ST801. We're going to do a little bit of disassembly and maintenance and see the inner workings of this thing, see exactly how it uh, how it ticks, if you would. I need to give a big shout out to Jimmy Crow for sending this knife in for us to take a look at and disassemble and have some fun with and share it to all you guys out there on YouTube and all of our loyal fans and um, our friends. How about that? So we're only going to need two drivers here, T6, T8, T6 on all the body, screws, T8 in the pivot. So let's go ahead and get uh, get right to it. Let's take a start with our pocket clip here. Like I said, we always uh, extra careful with our T6s. Make sure your driver is fully inserted into the, the fastener before you start loosening. You definitely don't want to strip out anything or do any sort of funny business like that. So always keep an eye out. This is another thing I always preach. Make sure you're knowing you're going to know where your bolts are coming out of, your fasteners. See, these are two different sizes here, so it's always something to pay attention to. So always want to make sure your bolts go or your screws go exactly where they came out of and uh, so one of our I'm guessing this goes into our, our uh, backspacer right here on this side through the clip so we got two body screws over here one here but one of them goes with that clip and this is actually non-reversible so I didn't say that in the review this is a tip up right hand carry only so that's definitely another thing to keep in mind if you're gonna look into uh, investing into this knife so let's go ahead and uh, keep trucking right along here T6 for the body screw right there. Always like to take these apart in the manner I'm going to be putting them back together just so we know where everything is in case they are different sizes. But in this case, it looks like they're all going to be close to the same size, if not the same. So I kind of wish they were flush mounted screws, they would sit a little better. Okay, so there's that one. Let's go to move up to our uh, T8. Let's take out this pivot here. This is definitely not a captive pivot. I just felt it sliding away over there on my finger. So, what is going on with this right here? Oh, okay. So, this is the actual screw part over here. I took out the uh, whole entire pivot assembly on that side. So, be easy. I got stuff falling out all over the place here. Be mindful when you're taking these apart. You know, if you're uh, new to this, it can definitely get a little little crazy all in one go so that side was for the pivot there we got parts and pieces falling out all over the place holy moly okay there's one scale there's our liner and we got two uh, barrel spacers going on there okay there's our blade we got washers definitely caged I don't think these are ceramic but they're caged ball bearings so that is pretty crazy to see I like these ones that have like the brass phosphor bronze kind of deal going on there's our pivot right there and that was on the uh, you know I guess it really doesn't matter okay there's our other scale and our other liner so we got a stop pin on that side we got our detent ball okay let's move this other way so we got two scales two liners blade Two washers. Our uh, these are going to go in our backspacer right here to keep our screws going together right there. Set that off to the side. We got our pivot, three body screws plus our clip. So pretty simple, pretty simple setup here. Not a whole lot going on, and I really do like taking apart liner locks. They are the easiest knives to put back together in my opinion. Yeah, there's really not a whole bunch going on. No real moving parts for you to lose or. You know misplaced when you're taking them apart um, there's the cleaning rag right there give that a little scrub and you notice how far the you know you're really maximizing your amount of blade you can get out of this with keeping that pivot so close to the edge there for your well you see what you when we put it together you'll see what I'm saying so it's nice to see nice to see that they're giving you all you can for your $20 which is really awesome you know it's crazy to think that these knife companies can get these knives for this cheap. I don't know what kind of wizardry or child labor they got going on over there in China sometimes, maybe. Probably shouldn't say that. But 
whatever it is, they're giving you a pretty solid product for product for twenty dollars. So I don't know if, if somebody in America made this knife, how much it would cost. I imagine it would be at least close to eighty, ninety dollars, if not more than that. So but then again, you know, you're I'm definitely not bashing American made quality or products here. I have a couple, you know, I wish I had more American made knife, but I do not. Um, of course, they come with that premium price tag, but I sure do love to support it whenever I can. And I hope to uh, one day in my collection only have American made knives. Wouldn't that be cool? Cool for all of us. So, all right, get that wipe down there. I've definitely got a little bit of goo going on, it looks like, on our scale here. Give that a clean up. All right. Maybe it was just how the dye worked on there. Like I said, these, like I said, these were tan at one point in time. And he also did roughly de-stress these with, um, I think he said 200 grit sandpaper, 220 grit sandpaper. So he distressed these, made them look uh, pretty sweet in my opinion. Definitely cool. So this is going to be our liner lock side right there. I think we're pretty much ready to go back together for assembly on this thing. So let's, uh, let's get right onto it. How about that? So... It'll be just like so. We're going to put our backspacer in. It's definitely the way it's going to go. Maybe. Which we really don't even need to. How about we? like this these actually are a different size too by the way so it's definitely good to uh keep in mind sorry guys i'm trying to keep you all in in frame here what we're doing it's gonna put a little bit of loctite on here for our body screws this is gonna be our top screw all right of course we don't even have our barrel spacer in there yet well, I'm turkey. All right. Now we got that part going. Let's go ahead and put our back one in. And of course, you guys could probably do this any sort of which way you want to. Um, I think this is going to be the best way for me to do it but um, whatever you guys think you see fit of how you want to put it together this is definitely going to get us to the end result though so I am not a professional knife heck I'm not even a professional knife reviewer by any stretch of the imagination I just like and have a passion to take these things apart put them back together and do some collecting and hopefully tell you guys about them and maybe influence your decision on buying some so you know I just have fun with it and that's all we should strive to do is just have fun with it especially our any of our hobbies that we like to do so let's go from there and of course like i said this pivot is not captive so it's going to be free spinning in there hmm. let's go with this one this one might i want to go in the other side maybe i not like to go maybe i don't have it perfectly perfectly centered or lined up or what the deal is nope there we go that worked just good okay all right we're getting somewhere sorry keep getting you guys off the count off the camera here so uh, if you remember from a couple videos ago you got to be mindful of where you're putting your um, washers especially the orientation of them I guess you could say because these bearings they're not washers these bearings they kind of have like a lipped see how they have like kind of a dish going on there so obviously the one with the ball sticking out that's going to go onto your knife blade just like so let's put our stop pin on that side there so my blade's going to go on let's put a little bit more lube on here put a little bit on the actual blade itself i don't know if you want to call that a race but where our night our blade is going to be riding on like so and then let's make sure we got our bearings going the right way on this one this side too a little bit of kpl on there throw that one on yeah 
left, right. I had to stop and think for a second to make sure I'm putting it on there right, exactly. Okay. Now we're going to go directly right back onto this one. Kind of snap everything into place exactly where we can get it, just like so. You're going to have to push it in there. All right. Let's see if you guys can hopefully get a good look into that there. All right. Kind of center it up for you. All right, now we're going to go back on with this side. Of course, this is the one that's going to have our uh, pocket clip on it, so it's going to look kind of a little naked without the other screw in there from the clip. A little bit of Loctite. We're going to throw him right on here. Like I said, this is going to go into our backspacer. Make sure it's lined up just right. And let's go in with our pivot now. I do not have another T8, so we're going to see how this how this fares. Might have to pause the video and go find something to make work here. But it should snug down just enough to where we can get it going. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get our clips here, our clip going. Let's set him right in there like so. Get our T6 out. Run this one back in. Run that one in. Like I said, these are not flush mounted, so we don't get crazy just yet. Let's just get them in there, get them started, because it definitely might mess with our actual performance. So, okay, we're looking pretty good there. Right now, we're pretty centered, very well centered, I'd say. Let's get into just a little, a little snug in. See what we're see what the action feels like first. Might have actually made it a little too tight there. Centering looks right on the money. Maybe just a little more. Try to get a little more fall shut on that one. Might be a little more tightened up than that. It feels a little wiggly. We don't obviously don't want any blade play going on here. See how I brought it right back to the, I guess you guys can't even see it. As soon as I tightened that pivot up, brought it right back down to the center. So I definitely took a little too much out of it. But I guess that's about where we, what we were working with. So let's go ahead and tighten down the rest of our body screws here. Our T6. Always be careful, make sure you get them all the way inserted before you go wrench on anything. And you got to remember what you're working on here. It's not a crazy thing. You don't need to be getting your torque wrench out and hammering these things home. They shouldn't have to uh, be that crazy. So lock up feels pretty good. Maybe just a little tighter. Centering right on the money. Way better on the lock up. Action's still great. Maybe just a touch more. You definitely want your knife lock up to be good and strong, but at the same time, you definitely do want your action to still work good. So it's a fine line when you're taking these apart and messing with them. But that feels pretty good. Action feels great. Incredible. Flipping action, good. And centering right on the money, if that's important to you. Some people it is, some people it's not. You know, they don't really care. They just want it to be a nice cutting tool. So hopefully, and you know, this really goes to a lot of liner lock knives. It's not just to this Sativian ST801. You could really fo follow this for pretty much any liner lock. Um, they're all pretty much the same. When you get taken apart, the whole insides are pretty much all gonna be similar. So, you, of course, most time you have a backspacer. If not, you have barrel spacers running down along there, like your uh, Ontario Rat Model 2 here. This one has one, two, three, four backspacers going on there with your liner. So, this one's a pretty stout knife for what it is um, so but it all in, relatively is going to be the same internals so nothing too much different going on with any other liner lock and i'm pretty sure for frame locks but most of the time they don't have liners especially like your um fair and forge design alluris this is just you know two slabs of titanium and there's not even a backspacer this is whole just you know milled into it so this is even more simple to take apart and uh, i'm going to be doing a video on this one pretty soon too my wife and children got me this for Christmas this year, and this is my first titanium frame lock knife, and I love it. So, titanium frame lock, CPM at 20 CV blade steel, 
this thing's definitely a winner. So, all right, guys, if you have any questions, then don't forget, all these tools are going to be linked down in the description below. They're all cheap, and they do help my channel if you uh, look into them. So that's completely up to you guys. But until next time, thanks.